Oh, okay. Cool. Right. So, um, so um, this is the plan, uh, the presentation and discussion. So feel free to, you know, um, write your name uh, wherever you want to present. Um, so today, basically, because I'm lead the lead, I have definitely my name becomes the first. So, oh yeah, Angel, you want to have a question? Please go on. Yes, I noticed that at the end of the year, we have December 24 and 31 of our class. And at least here in the Dominican Republic, Christmas, we celebrated the 24 right on 25 of December. Oh, really? And yeah, yeah, yeah. We have like a celebration really close to Thanksgiving. So we go to the whole family and get together the 24. Just waiting for getting Christmas. I don't know if we can skip those two weeks for for those celebrations, or at least the New Year one. Okay, no worries. I think um it's fine if we come to the yeah we can observe any break if any of us you know that would be fine. Yeah, that that would be great because I don't want to to miss <laughs> any any conversation. Okay, good. All right, no worries. Um, let us know when the time comes so that we can. Make sure that uh, everything is uh, considered. Thank you. All right. So um, a lot of you have known Shiny. Um, maybe you have been doing Shiny, but for me, um, this is the beginning. So um, I'm here also to learn together. So so um, this first chapter, your first Shiny from the name, um, it's just saying your first Shiny. It assume, for example, you're going to have some flashy app that runs to show how the Shiny works. So some of the objective of this um, chapter is just to create a simple, very simple Shiny app to just show you the skeleton on what makes Shiny app, uh, to discuss some of the, you know, um, important component of Shiny, um, what, which is, uh, you know, the um, UI and also the server and, the, you know, and understand how they are connected and also some, a bit of React user input. So these are some of the objectives and um, I haven't modified this book. Um, I'm using the existing book. So maybe you guys, uh, for example, or Lua Femi, you are the ones that did this one in the previous chapter, in the, the previous course. So I haven't modified any, but just going through it. So, um, so as we can see here, um, this chapter talk about uh, two things. We can see um, in any Shiny app, we have what is called user input and where we have um, an active um, output. So based on the user input, then there is gonna be some kind of changes. That's what we call React. So Shiny alphas automatically react to any changes of the user. And the two key components, as we know, is UI and the server. And after this UI and the server, we have what is called reactive programming. Um, whatever you have in the UI, um, in the input will change this one. So this is basically the installation. Um, yeah, so um, the installation of the Shiny and loading the app. Let's move on. So let's look at the creating the app. So as this chapter says, um, the main um, things we wanna see how the Shiny app works. So the basic functionality of any Shiny app um, is that it composed of two things. As we said previously, this is a UI and this is a server. So um, when you want to create a shiny app, what you need to do basically is just um, to okay. So let me clean this. Can you see my RCU? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, this is the um. No. Oh, if I want to remove the um comment, what should I do? <laughs> Z. Okay. Uh, control Shift C. Okay. Yeah, I'm using Control Shift C, but it's adding me more comment. I, I expect it to try to it. don't select the sample line. Yeah, don't select the sample. Yeah. What do you mean? Uh, just from the library. Uh huh. Right there. From the uh, library. No, 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 not too much. Ah, okay. Yeah, just from the library. Yeah. Oh yeah. Very good. 
So yeah, so um, what we can see here is two things. Um, we have the library with node, and we have this UI, and we have this server, right? So um, in the basic for the app, Shani, we should have an app that are something like this or whatever, and we can have these basic basic setup. So when we run this, we'll be able to see um Shani. Um, so this is a basic, and we can see here the UI, and we have hello world and that's what actually show us this hello world and from here we can see nothing's um you know from the uh server nothing here it just we have some input output session but we'll see what it entails there so that's basically what this means um if we look at this one here you can see um it loads just shiny which with the library um define the ui so this define the ui which what we have just seen it defined the ui that shows the hello and specify the behavior of the app in the server. So this server specify the behavior of the server uh, of the app. So we can see here the behavior that is not anything like you know the behavior that it behaves to change change or anything, but we've seen a bit. And the, finally, we have this shiny app which execute your app. So you have the UI, you have the server. So UI server, then you have the final one, shiny app that uh, put the app in together, and you put this one. So this one to construct and start the app. So this finally uh, construct and start the app. So this is the basic, um, what the Shiny um, app is. Uh, so before anyone want to add something before we move on? Um, anyone want to add something? So basically when we have this, we can just run type. So if you are using RStudio, a lot of us, I believe are using RStudio. So we can just type, um, click R, um, run app to show the app. All right, so anyone wants to add something? Okay, so um, now we have seen how we can run the app, right? So how can you um, start the app and um, and stop it as some way? So the basic workflow, if you are working with Shiny, um, if you wanna do um, any app, is to write some code, start the app, play the app a bit, and write more code, repeat this, you know, low because you don't come at the beginning to have a very a complete app, you know, per se. Um, you just try test and whatsoever. So this is how the loop looks like. So you start and um, write some code, start the app, play with the app, and, you know, see the behavior. Does that look good to you? And now stop the app. So um, there are many ways to start the app and whatsoever. You can use run the app, which I already showed here. You can use this. Uh, we can use command R for ship enter to run the app. Um, so if not using R Studio, um, you can source the you know the uh, file uh, app that R. You can source it here to run it. And finally, if we are running the app, we will be able to see this one. Uh, and if we observe our uh, if we observe our console, we will be able to see this listening to this. So this is basically uh, we can see. Uh, this is a standard address of any computer. If you have one, two, seven, this, and the last four digit randomly assigned port number. So the port number is assigned to the last digit. Um, we may know this one. So if you are working on developing some app, uh, you always want to run and test it. I want to test it to see it on browser. So you have the standard and the last four digits random port number. That, and for you to do that, we can, you know, if we have this, we are running the app, um, how can we stop it? For example, here that is stop. You can stop it here. Um, stop the sign in the console and escape from the app console. So as well, if we are running the app, we can tap. Um, you know, we can use escape. So here I tap the escape and it's you know stop the app. And we can close the shiny app window. So for example, this is the shiny app window. If I close this shiny app, we can see we close the app, right? So this is basically. Uh, how we can run and uh, you know stop and run the app. Okay. Um. Anyone want to add something? Okay. We are good. So now we have seen how we can start the app and you know stop it. Now let's add some stuff into the app. So we have seen that um, this is a basic you know uh, functionality. We have seen the structure, but. Uh, we can now uh, move on and add some more details to see what will happen now. Um, so if we look at this one here, the same document we have, the UI here, 
um, I added something, select input, I added something, barbecue output, I have added something, table output, right? So what this means, um, you can see everything the same, right? So let's run this guy. So when we run this guy, you can see here, um, you can see the input here, you can see the output here, you can see double this. But the input here, we have something like this. Uh, you can see we specify something like this data set, um, you know, the level, this is the data set. And this is, um, you know, the choices, uh, what kind of choices we want. Um, we are calling it from this package, um, LS um, data set um, package. So um, we can see here from these guys, fluid page. So this is, you know, um, when you are doing shiny, you may need to have several and different user layout, uh, maybe it's different layout. So there are different kind of layout that you can use select from, but this is just, you know, the beginning, just to show you a little bit of um, one of the layout. So to set up the visual structure of the page, select input, um, you can see here we use input uh, for user to interact with. So this is select input to allow user to interact with, for example, to select some values to input, Barbative, this output control. So this Barbative test output is a text output, but that output, you know, text, um, for example, summary or whatsoever that we see. So for example, here, if it is summary of calculation, you do some analysis and you wanna show to people, you can use Barbative test output to show that. Table output from the name we can see, um, you know, is something to output to user. So if you have something to show to the user as a table format, you can use this, but there are many. So you can see here is text. If you wanna show text, table, if you wanna show table. So you can identify all these, you know, um, control what um, you know they represent. So you can see here is input control, uh, test control, and output um, table control. Um, and also at the same time, you can see here these are output, these are output, but this is input, right? But it's select uh, uh, control. So yeah, so this is basically um, what we have just seen. Uh, one of these stuff. Okay, let's move on. So adding behavior. Now the previous one, what we have just seen, we added um, the some of the you know stuff from the UI. So let's look at what how can we add some stuff in the behavior. So this is a behavior as we know. Um, let me comment this guy. So if we come here and okay, so if we come here and we can see that um, this is the same stuff we have in our UI. And uh, we want to add some stuff in this, um, you know, some behavior. So what we can see here is that um, we have some stuff here, output summary, right? Previously, you can see here we have Baba team test output summary. We said that maybe we want to show to you that some summary, but we didn't include how to calculate those summary to output the user. We cannot calculate it here because this is basically the UI that, you know, define how the structure is. You need to define any action, any, you know, um, something that changes, you need to define it in, in the server. So we have two things that we want to show to the user, the summary and also the table. That means we need to have some, you know, some action, right, within our server that will be able to calculate the summary. We need to have some action within our server that will be able to calculate the table that we want to show to the user, right? So this is the first one, um, the render print um, that get the summary. So here we have our output ID. We can see here output, we call this summary. Um, then we have what we call render print. So you can see because it's printing, we want to just print um, the text. So we have this render print and you know we have this get this, um, the data set input data set. And uh, we can see this is the summary finally, right? So summary from this data set is, um, you know, it print the summary. And we can see that here, based on this one here, we can see input. We have this, our input is, um, you know, part of the input we can see. Then we have our data set. This is the input data we're gonna work on. Um, here as well, we can see the same thing. And uh, here we can see we have render print. Then here we have render table. And Finally, here we can see it just data set, right? So we can see here it just because it's a table, um, you know, we have the data set here. So basically, um, when we look at this, guys, we can see that um, 
we can see that we have this one and each output id is a new shiny output to render where the ui defined it so here each output id so output some id this is summary output table this is the id and there are specific render function um, we have so you can see here we have a render print and we have render table so there are many specific render functions that we can see in the future render text tables you know floats image um new ui component i don't know all this stuff but uh, we will see them um, when we can but for now um, we have seen some of these render functions um, table and also print. Okay, so now we have added um, these and let's run this guy and see what will happen. So we can see here that uh, we have the input what we already had and now this is the print, what we have from this guy, um, the output and um, we have the table as well. So this basically um, give us um, the idea of what we were doing uh, we have our stuff. Okay. Um, any question or anyone wants to ask something more? Yeah, I would like to to say that when I was reading this part, maybe the most interesting part was get because we don't usually use get in R. It's basically mm -hmm. when you when you are selecting the drawdown list, you are basically just selecting a, a a test vector. So you want to have the object. And, be, and get what he's doing is, oh, I have this name and I go to this environment, uh, the package data set environment, and it looks for that object in that environment. If you, for example, save another variable, you you need to change that environment. If you are taking that from a package or maybe from the global environment of the app. So that mm -hmm. that's, it's like a VLOOKUP or something like that in, in, our, in this case. So. That, that's what the get is doing. Okay. So the get is trying to, um, yeah, okay. To get the data, the, the object from that environment. You go, for example, to our studio. Again, you will see the... Yeah. Yeah, the below tab that says environment, uh, left bottom, environment, okay. bottom. And you can click over global environment. You will see the data sets and it's using that syntax to say, that, oh, I'm using that data set from this environment. If you, for example, save another data set in your global environment, you need to specify where you, you want to get that. If you want to get it from the global or from the package environment. Mm. Right. Okay. Good. Thank you. So anyone... And you're welcome. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, good. Thank you. Anyone wants to add more information? All right, so, okay, so yeah, so thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so let's move on. So um, now the last, um, um, something close to the last part is uh, something the, that uh, has been discussed in the book called reactive expression. Now, um, what we can see here is that um, we have, you know, have this, um, you know, line duplicated. We have this one here right um yeah we also use this one here but uh, the main part is we use this data set and we all know the duplication in programming is not something needed right um uh, I, I one quote from hardly hardly um if you write i think two two times or three times you need to make it function or something like that um, so the main idea is that if you have um du du uh, duplicate of the same code um you need to um, automate it um, to make it whether a function or to assign to variable or something like that. So in um, in shiny development, that thing can may not work. For example, the function, I think, and all those stuff. So they come with the new um, idea, which is called reactive expression um, that combines some of the logic uh, as variable and functions. So, uh, you know, in R, we, when we duplicate some code multiple times, we can change it to function, right? Um, 
or we can you know assign something as a variable and just use the variable the name of the variables anywhere we want to use rather than just to use that stuff so reactive expression combines some of the logic some of the same logics as variable and function but is a bit different as these do not work the same way as shiny in normal r so they do not work the same way um the shiny so the main important thing here this is the chain of the code um instead for us to have this the same code then we have these, you know, inside our server function, we have what we call reactive expression, um, which is this, we can see that. So there I said, um, if we look at that here, we already, um, every time we have our data set, data set, something like that. So this is, we have this reactive, um, you can see this is a function, we have reactive, and then we have the get data stuff here. And now our data set is here. So this means that we can just call, um, you know, summary, data set we can call the, our data set here you can see that here we can just call it here um so here you can see it's just data set we just call it data set but this is not a function right um it's just a calling you know uh, remember is it in part in r do you do this in r um you know when you are calling a function you, you don't specify it in this way right um it's like a function to me it's a function the function is a function a function right yes okay mm. yeah okay uh use the reactive by calling it like a function no call it like a function but it's not a function this one right this is not a function you know what i mean um look at the, the reactive um ex is expression right so we assign you know yeah anyway because we I, I would say that it's an anti-function yeah because of the opening and closing parenthesis yeah. before after the data set, so it's a function. Oh, this one? You mean? Oh, this, no, this. that one. Yes, this yes, one. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I know this is how we call a function. But what I'm saying here, um, from here, uh, what is data set? What can we say a data set is from here? It's like to me, it's like an anti function. I see it as an anti function. So you have a function to get the data. But you don't have to specify any argument and you don't you use it as an object. <laughs> but it's mm -hmm. like the reactive way is like a function to me. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if I have another technical explanation. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so yeah, use reactive expression by calling it like a function. So yeah. So anyway, so yeah, you call it like a function here, and you know, it serves our purpose. So um yeah, okay. So we can see here, we remove the duplication. So we don't need to do that. So when we go back here, um, you know, this is our, uh, okay. If I comment this guy. Okay, so if I comment this guy and show us this one. We can see the same stuff. Um, now we have our server here and we have our data set and we have this guy here as well. Then we have this guy as well here. So when we run this guy, so we can see this works the same. So that's um, the power of reactive, um, you know, yeah. reactive expression. It allows you to, you know, make your code more beautiful, more smarter than having those applications. So this is just visualizing, you know, how the reactive expression is. And finally, um, the chapter gives us some resources for Shiny. So these are, for example, cheat sheet for the Shiny. Um, these are some of the um, resources uh, from our studio, the gallery, um, Shiny widget, and, you know, Shiny dashboard. Um, these are all good resources for, um, you know, uh, for uh for shiny all right so um i think that's the uh, the end of this chapter because it's obviously small and uh yeah anyone wants to um add more stuff okay so um that's um, the end of today presentation. Uh, thank you. Let me write stuff. Okay.